I've been pondering timeouts lately that you do with kids and I've never been able to find a video where they really articulate what it what you're doing with the timeout like why does the timeout technique work and after a lot of pondering I've come up with this conclusion that the timeout is actually your picking your battleground so let's say you have a, a marker on the table and you tell your three-year-old hey don't touch that marker and then they go over and they open up the marker and you take the marker away and you close it and you kneel down and you say if you play with this marker again you're going to go in time out so you set the marker back down the three-year-old picks it up and goes straw on the table so you take the marker away and you take your child to time out. So it's like, why, why is the battleground being moved to a different location? It's because you're picking a battleground where you can win. There's no good way for you to fight a battle with your child over the marker to get them to comply. So the end goal is compliance and you're picking your battleground so you go and you set them in time out your child isn't going to stay in time out your child is not going to be quiet in time out your child is not going to comply because you've already determined your child is in a headspace where they are not willing to comply with you you already asked them hey don't touch this marker and they didn't comply. So when you put them in timeout, you're not getting a perfect timeout. You're not getting them to just sit there and do their consequence just perfectly. That That's not what's going to happen. You're picking your battleground because you can, with very... You, you can fight the battle and you've condensed the battle to a, an area where you can win with very few steps. So you've simplified the battle. The battle is not no longer over a marker where you're like, I'm just going to continually take this marker away from you because you won't listen to me. You've, you've moved it to, you're going to sit on this chair for, in this case, three minutes, because you're a three-year-old, because you did not comply with the rule I gave you, with the boundary I gave you. You did not comply. And you had your warning, and you chose non-compliance. So now I am taking you to the timeout spot, and the goal of the timeout is compliance. And that is going to look very different for different children. So I have a son who most days you set him in timeout for three minutes and he is, he doesn't get up. He sits there um, at the end of his three minutes. He apologizes for not listening. We do hugs and kisses and he goes back to playing and then I get complete compliance from him for the rest of the day. So I have other children who it was a hour long battle of, they were like, I will not comply with you. I will not listen. And I used to get really frustrated because I was like, like, geez, no matter how many times we do timeouts, my kids uh, don't sit in timeout nicely. They don't like, they don't comply. But the problem with my child is my child did not like to comply. It wasn't that I wasn't doing timeout right or that the technique wasn't working. It's that my child didn't choose compliance. They woke up and chose non-compliance every day. That's what they did. They just woke up and chose not to comply with the rules. So you are picking a battleground where you can win, where you can teach your child compliance in very simple steps. 
it's not abstract. It's just very simple because the goal is compliance. So you put your child in timeout and they instantly get back out of timeout. So without saying a word, you just pick them up and put them back in timeout. And you walk away and they scream and they kick and they throw things and they knock things over and you just ignore them. And then they get back out of timeout and you pick them up and you put them back in timeout. And this isn't a time to feel overwhelmed. Like, oh my gosh, they won't listen. Or to feel like, like this anxiety inside of you, like, oh, they're so angry or they won't stop screaming. Like, like. Like, because the goal isn't for them to sit quietly. The goal is compliance. I always thought the goal of timeout was to get your child to sit quietly and think about what they were doing so that they'd then come out of timeout and be like, I've thought about it. I was quiet. I sat good for timeout. No, the goal of timeout is compliance. So it's the whole, you may not like it, but you have to follow my directions. You have to operate within the boundaries I give you. You don't have to like it, but you have to follow it. And that's what timeout teaches a child. So your child learns when mom says, don't touch the marker. I may not like it. I may really want to play with that marker. I may really, really love markers and want that marker, but I'm not going to touch it. And it's not that I, I, I don't want to touch it. It's not that I'm adopting my mother's viewpoint of you don't want to touch that marker. And I'm like, Oh, I don't want to touch that marker. It's, it's that I still want the marker, but I'm going to operate within my boundaries. And time out, it's not that, oh, I'm going to like sitting in time out. It's that I'm going to sit in time out because I'm complying with what's, what I've been told to do. And it's, it's brilliant when you really ponder like the, the psychology of it, when you ponder like what you're actually teaching your child and how you're setting yourself up for success. Because it's, it's like all these scenarios of like, like, like don't go through the gate in the backyard. I want you to stay in the backyard or, um, we're in the store. I want you to hold on to the shopping cart and I don't want you to run away. Like all of these scenarios where you end up with non-compliance from your child, it's very hard to find a way to, to to teach them the importance of compliance with that, where, where you're not having them continually, um, break the rule that you put in front of them. So timeout is like a safe place. It's a safe, simple battleground to fight a battle with your child. And when you can set aside the emotional part of it. Like, Oh my gosh, my guy, my child's screaming. It's embarrassing. Like what kind of a mother am I? When you can set all of that aside and just focus on, I am fighting a battle in a controlled environment. I am controlling this environment. I have picked the battleground and I am in control of the battleground. My child Hey, there's nothing my child can do to weasel their way out of this. There, there's nothing they can do to manipulate you into getting their way. You have picked a very simple, controlled battleground and you're going to teach your child compliance. And it's in, in a very calm man manner. Because you're teaching your child, I am stable. And even if you're having the worst day where you hate everything and you don't want to listen, I am a stable person. And I'm not going to break because you're upset. It's like, 
you're going to follow the boundaries. You're going to follow our rules. And if you choose non-compliance, I'm a rock. I am going to be here to teach you where the boundary is. And you're not going to shake me. And you're not going to be able to get your way, which is dangerous when we're talking about going through gates and running across roads or trying to go to the neighbor's house. Like, like these are dangerous activities. Your child has to learn boundaries and they have to learn that screaming and throwing a fit and being angry, like none of that is going to get them their way. And the timeout is really the perfect place for that. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. And I've never had anyone explain it to me. What you're actually doing with the timeout. What the goal of the timeout is. What, like, what is the the theory of the timeout 